Welcome back to the Critically Clueless. I'm Marty, and today I'm going to be doing a review on Little Nightmares. Here we go. Immerse yourself in Little Nightmares, a dark, whimsical tale that will confront you with your childhood fears. Help Six escape the moor, a vast, mysterious vessel inhabited by corrupted souls looking for the next meal. As you progress on your journey, explore the most disturbing dollhouse, offering a prison to escape from and a playground full of secrets to discover. Reconnect with your inner child to unleash your imagination and find a way out. Now this game is a puzzle platformer horror adventure game that will take you about 12 hours to complete. Now it was developed by Tarzia Studios and published by Bandai Namco Entertainment and is currently out on Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One and Stadia. Now prices for this game are as follows, Xbox One is $15.99, this is all in pounds by the way, PlayStation 4 is $3.99 but only until the 3rd of February 2021, then it's back up to $15.99 for that. Uh, PC on Steam, it's $15.99. The Nintendo Switch, which is only the complete edition, as that's the only one I could find, that will set you back $29.99. And Stadia is a monthly subscription, which I think is about $8.99 per month. Now, the game was released back on 28th of April 2017. Yes, this is a late review by a little bit. But I wanted to play this game to kickstart in finding the top 5 horror games. Plus, Little Nightmares 2 is set to be released on the 11th of February 2021. Which I will be covering and I will be really in wanting to play to be totally honest. So is this a scary jumpy horror? Not so much. Is it a horrific story? Oh yes. This story is Definitely on my top 10 list of being messed up horror story. I did feel anxious, uh, you know, and nervous when being chased by the corrupted souls. The blind uh, soul guy with the longest, lankiest arms I've ever seen was probably the most intense one out of them all, as he had really good hearing. So getting around him is difficult. You know, you step on any part of the floor that isn't carpet, then in a second, it's gone silent. He's noticed the sound and <laughs> he's straight after you. It's just kind of absolutely leg it at this point. You know, which you have to then try and find a place to hide from him. Otherwise, he grabs you and it's over. Well, you don't see anything actually happen, but, you know, it goes dark and, you know, it goes back to the actual checkpoint from where you last were or save point. So, as I said before, this game is quite... You know, disturbing. It's not really a horror, jumpy, scary game that's going to completely make you fall off your chair or anything like that. But the actual story and the premises of the game seem to be really good, and I've really enjoyed how it's been made and how it's been done. Now, you know, there's a few characters that obviously you've got to run away from. You've got to run away from these corrupted souls, like you know, as I said before, the the guy with the who's blind, has got lanky long arms. There's also, this, I think, they, I'm just going to call them chefs, because, or butch, no, good, actually, yeah, no, butchers would be better, because at the end of the day, they're not actually seem to cook anything, they're just cutting meat up around you. Now, they did not seem as scary, or as frightening as the other ones, but they, um, you've got to be a bit more careful around each, each one, to be totally honest, offering, you know, each... Each, each corrupted soul has its own sort of purpose that you've got to get around to. You've got to go with the blind guy, you've got to be as quiet as possible. With the chef guys who aren't actually blind, then you can't be, you know, seen, obviously. You've got to stay in the shadows. You can't be using your light as well um, to actually move around because they'll spot the light from a distance as well and then they'll be after you. Um, there is another part as well that you actually, you've got to creep past uh, a location where a light basically is shining on you. So you've got to stay in the shadows on this and you've got to time it well to move across without being spotted by it. You know, if you get spotted by this light, it literally turns you into stone, I'm going to say, because that's what it seems like it does. Um, but yeah, it's with everything I've seen so far, it's, it's really enjoyed. 
Oh, sorry, it's really enjoyable. I've, you know, I'm, I'm hooked onto the game. I'm, I'm definitely wanting to, you know, play more of it, and I, I just can't wait for the next series of this game to actually come out. I mean, it's, it's been quite a while since they've obviously they've taken the time obviously to actually build the next game. I don't know what else they've been doing in the time. I'd actually have to search out and find out, but, you know, even so, the next one looks like it's going to be good, and uh, hopefully it's going to be as good as this one. Now I did notice that when you die, you don't always go back to where you saved. Um, I'm not really sure as to why this happens. As as far as I can work out, is that you know when you actually light a candle or a lantern, if it's if it's called that, um, it saves as a checkpoint. But yet, don't always go back to that point. Which the question that has to be asked is, what is the point of doing this? is, you know, if it's, it clearly isn't working the way it was designed to. Now, graphics on the game are really good. You know, I love the way the shadows and the light really looked and worked. You know, Six's movement was, you know, really well done. Um, to, you know, when she's running down the stairs, you see her pick up speed and she ends up skipping down a few more extra steps in the process of doing that, which is really good. I love that. You know, water looked good. Um... Good enough, I suppose. And the corrupt souls definitely looked creepy, dark, and horrible. Now, they certainly did this game justice in a horror puzzle platformer uh, game. The sounds in the game were, you know, really good. Listening to every little sound that happens, you know, you're just sitting there thinking, you know, what's next? What's going to chase me? What's, what's going to get me? And honestly, I really, really enjoyed this game. Even though there's no talking, there's no cutscenes, there's no real other characters that you come in contact with as far as I can sort of tell. Um, apart from the, obviously the corrupt souls and these little creatures that run around, which I'm pretty sure you can grab them, but I've never actually been able to. Well, you're, you're able to give, grab them and give them a hug for some reason, but yeah, I've never been able to do that. But it's just you in this horrible, damp, cold place where everything is trying to get you. As I said, this won't scare you in a jumpy way, but it certainly is an interesting game and story. It's so simple, yet it's not boring in any way. You know, so Little Nightmares 2. Now, I cannot wait to play this now. Because the way this story has gone and the way they've done it has just been brilliant. So scoring this game, you know, how did it do? Well, it did really well. It's got a solid, brilliant score of 8 out of 10. Now the question stands, will Little Nightmares 2 get as good of a score? We'll have to find out soon I suppose. So I hope you all enjoyed the video and if you did, hit that like, subscribe and notification button as well. Also leave me a comment, let me know what you thought. Also tell me your best horror game that you've ever played or if there's any you think I should actually try out because I want to get as many horror games in as I can, you know, good or bad, and just see what's, you know, how different they are from each other, and see where this is all going to go. Well, we've been the Critically Clueless, and I've been Marty. Take care. See you again soon.